fingers crossed, fingers crossed, as we are diving on in. Oh boy, another PVT. Yeah, we're getting a surprising amount of them this week. Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. They've been a lot of fun. They've been a lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> they absolutely have. I don't know if that's the matchup itself or if it's the players, but uh, they have been very enjoyable to watch as we kick off our first best of three semifinals. Predictions uh, oh, should true. be getting... Yep, so I forgot about them entirely until now. But you should be able to place some predictions by the time I finish this intro. In the bottom right-hand corner map, spawning all the way in the bottom right-hand corner, we of course have our red Terran player coming out from the land of Korea, currently residing in the land of Japan. He is of course representing Preppy Sports. He is Hon. Mono. And spawning in the top left-hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire, we have the Polish Protoss player. He is not pink, he is purple. Representing in Fenalis Esports, it is Papi. A Papi casted by a Papi. T Papi, C. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, we need to bring them all together. There's Papi, there's Papi Joe as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, not the same player, not the same player. Yeah. There's also uh, Peppy. There's Peppy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that counts, but. There's Peza Perry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's Papa Panda. There's Papa Panda, there's Juanito, you know, there's uh, yeah. a lot of, lot of Papis out there. Oh, yeah. There's Jaime, Jim Rising, now officially an, an actual puppy. He's in the, yeah, <laughs> an actual puppy. There you go, there you go. Mighty Kiwi, soon to be a puppy. Yeah. Um, massive shout out to David. But um, yeah, already as we get into this series, Honomono is doing what he does best, and that is just keep his opponent in the dark. We do see a probe scout going across the map. Honomono immediately walls off here with his depot. And what's he hiding? Nothing really, because he is taking a base. He is expanding on the high ground, but Papi doesn't know that. Yeah, Honmono is hiding the fact that he's playing standard, or at least as standard as you can get by trying to hide your trying to hide your main base like this. Yeah, I have to wonder. I, I always have to wonder this when the Europeans are introduced to some of these more uh, unorthodox players about whether or not Papi is aware about how Honmono plays. I'm sure Geralt wasn't, right? Geralt came in as the favorite. Everyone was looking at Geralt like, oh my god, he's here to finally win a tournament. Um, and then he runs into Hon Mono, you know, uh, a force to be reckoned with, you know, a, a freak of nature. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Um, so, like, yeah, I, I'm always curious when it comes to Hon Mono's opponents, if they if they know what they're getting into. Yeah, I guess it is a little bit important to keep in mind. Hon Mono has only pretty recently been... True. rising the ranks of net notoriety so yeah there was a point in time not that long ago i think at the start of this year where even korean players weren't really aware of how hon mono plays yeah like hon mono three point these guys there's a lot of these um uh, up and coming semi pro korean players that really started to rise up uh basically like around the start of covid maybe even a little bit after covid um so they're like relatively new to the scene and a lot of people are unaware of them um so we'll see how they go here meanwhile once again we've seen this before earlier today it beat Geralt two on one yeah thankfully for papi though warp gate is about to finish up so true it's not gonna be as punishing this time yeah, we saw a Stargate opener here from Bobby. He's going across the map with his first Oracle. With this Oracle, he should get confirmation on the production. The Marines are kind of in position, but again, the Oracle should see everything. Like so. It sees almost everything. Won't be able to see the boys being pulled, though, if uh, it moves away. <laughs> That's true. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, right now, Hormon is just waiting for his first wave of of medivacs to go and move out across the map. Again, as a reminder, this did end up killing Geralt earlier, but Papi is approaching this in a little bit of a different manner. Um, quickly checking here. He doesn't have a Twilight Council, so he's not going to be relying on Blink. Instead, he went for a faster Robo after Starking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Interestingly God. enough, and now we have confirmation of why. He is going to go for Colossus. Is this a good thing? 
um, I'm a little bit worried here as Poppy comes across the, the Metamax. Thank God. Uh, Poppy is working with two gateways right now. He has two gateways for production. His Robo isn't going to be doing anything because he's waiting for the bay. His Stargate isn't doing anything either. Like, we don't have that many units to work with. Yeah. But at the same time, Stim has only now pushed up for the bio, and with that, he is able to pounce on top of these vanilla stalkers. Again, he didn't go for the Twilight Council, did he? Mm. Yeah, exactly, no blink available, to, but here we go. The stalkers trade well enough to force a bit of a pickup. But uh, Honmono did trade relatively well, but he just didn't have enough momentum to keep on going. Bobby will defend, and this is going to be great for him. He survived despite only, again, having the minimal amount of units. And with a Colossi coming out, this is going to shut down any kind of buyer pressure. Yeah, even with the tanks coming out, if Honmono doesn't have a couple of Marauders to tank the damage, he's not really going to be able to break this. Yeah, or if he pulls the boys, he pulls the boys! <laughs> this is part of like a mono. Let's go, but you know what? Papi sees everything. He sees all. He has an observer here outside the natural base. He saw the boys being pulled. He should be more than prepared as the stasis trap goes off to maybe even evacuate and give up the third base. It looks like he wants to try and defend it. A little bit greedy, but he does have a shield battery. He has overcharge. He has stasis traps. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's anticipating what's coming his way, but uh, he's very well set stasis. up for it. Regardless of stasis, let's not get popped just yet. Oh my Tank god. will be taken out immediately, and with that, Hamono really doesn't have much of a backbone to keep up this pressure. Oh, uh, he really doesn't. We do have a second tank, though, and again, fighting outside of range of the shield battery isn't ideal. Looks like Hamono, sorry, Papi is going to lose a little bit, but the boys were pulled. Like, Hamono can't really transition from here. Yeah, he's gonna try. He reproduced a bunch of his workers and he's trying to mule that natural base, but he is just so insanely behind when it comes to the economy. He's on two bases versus a Protoss player on three, and he's down about 15 workers, give or take. Exactly, and because he pulled the boys earlier, he's even further behind economically. It looks like he wants to set up for a follow-up push. We do have Concussive Shell on the way. We have a third Rex being set up. I'd be shocked if we see a third TC. I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls the boys a second time. Here's what's interesting to me, Light. Go on. Homono opted not to go for an eBay at all, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not really going to be able to catch back up with a Cup City upgrades either. I mean, he just doesn't have the upgrades available to him, mm -hmm. is the thing. If he wants to end the game, I mean, he pretty much has to go now. He starts a third CC? Uh, uh, okay, buddy. <laughs> I mean, you, you just mentioned it, right? There are no Ebays. There are no upgrades. Honmono doesn't really have a lot of longevity with his army. Um, over time, it's just going to be outscaled. So he's on a timer. So for him to throw down a third CC, I'm a little bit in shock. Um, we'll see if he can pull this off. I mean, regardless, you know, Poppy himself is only just now throwing down two forges, so he doesn't have any upgrades to speak of either. So maybe, maybe Honmono can still macro out of this. Yeah, we'll see. He's trying to deal some equalizing damage wherever he can. But, I mean, look at Poppy's vision on the map. He's got observers mm -hmm. in every key important oh. area. All yeah. of these drops get scattered oh. pretty much immediately. <laughs> it's, breathe, breathe. Uh, the Metamax, All right, I forgot to do, <gasps> forgot to do that. The Metamax barely managed to escape. At the same time, there was a scan here. Honmono did get a kill on the Observer, and I have to wonder a couple of things. The Observer did see the third CC. Was that on purpose? Did Honmono just make this just to, to feign, to make a bit of a feign and to fake out his opponent? Does he really intend to make more workers from here? Because he hasn't made a worker in a while. Um, well, here's the thing, though. If you have things. a third CC, uh -huh. you can build more boys to pull. If you have a third CC as he scans for another observer, that means you can pull more boys. Let's go! Exactly, <laughs> yo! He can rally the boys across the map. You don't need boys. You as got, produce. Man, you got mules. You, you, you got mules. <laughs> we can pull down supply. Yeah. Here we go. We have a fight. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. The second time the boys are being pulled this game. But we do have a couple of stasis traps. Will he spot it in time? He scans and he sees. And he will be taking it out. Conventional wisdom will typically say that the first push of the Terran player is the deadliest. But I don't know this time. This is a much beefier army available for Hamono. 
Oh, it is much beefier, and I'm sure he was hoping that maybe Papi was going to be a little bit more, more greedy. He does have 1-1 one, one on the way, but the longer this goes on, the better it's going to be here for Papi. He has three Colossi. He has Disruptors on the way. Honmon is going to make something happen now. At the same time, we have Zelt in the main. If he wasn't all in already, he's all in now. Yeah, he may as well pull those boys that are remaining. He all really should. Man, go for a full base trade. Instead, he's trying to fight the Zealots, and he loses all of them. Ugh. Yeah, the Zelts are gonna go ham here in the main base. Meanwhile, a second Robo is completed. Two Disruptors are coming out at a time. Third base is gonna go down, but Papi, he can afford to lose a third. Yeah, initially, I was definitely appreciating how patient Homono was being when it came to pushing into this side of the map, but I feel like he need the time for that is gone. He can't continue to be oh. patient in this game! Oh. Purification Nova doesn't actually get that many units. I got SCVs. <laughs> you got SCVs. No, but the boys. The boys. The boys are dying. Meanwhile, we have the slow push here. The slow siege. The second oh. Robo is under threat. We are a little bit supply blocked. So both Robos go down. No more disruptors. But we have a Dark Shrine on the way. Yeah, it doesn't take that much to be able to win the game with DTs. I mean, the last Orbital Command is about to be oh. taken out. Hamona, does he turn around with his army? Does he get the surround? On this Protoss army, he can, but he doesn't. Oh, exactly. He was a little bit too preoccupied there at the natural base. Every single tank and Liberator goes down. His army was out of position. He wasn't there to support. We have the overcharge, and Honmono is running out of units. There's one boy Ooh. left for Honmono. GG is called. Papi takes game number one. He had zero supply. <laughs> Honmono had zero everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, GG. <laughs> uh, That's, for That's Hon Mono for you. GG, well played. Papi takes the first game, but Hon Mono made him work for it a little bit. I love the fake third TC. You know, we were just pumping out constant tanks, constant Vikings. We knew what was going to happen. Constant and boys. Constant boys as well. But Papi was prepared for anything. Again, that first wave just didn't didn't do as much as it needed to. And Papi was just so good at just, again, crippling the economy with his oracles, with his with his zealots. Um, just killing whatever workers he could. I would say I'm a little bit surprised that Homono committed to the initial push when he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> considering how well Papi was able to deal with that 2 on 1 I mean he took a couple of uh, he took a couple of casualties when it came to the stalkers and I think uh, two or three probes here and there that should have been a signal for Honmono to you know macro continue macroing instead he says nope I'm gonna push across the map without upgrades you know purely with stim I'm gonna let combat shield finish as I as I push into you and it's like no 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 you calm down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe there's a world where instead of pushing into the third, he pushes into the natural. Maybe he he rotates around, and the natural, there's no shield battery. There are no stasis traps. It's a little bit less defended. It takes longer to, to get there. Don't get me wrong. So it's, ah, it's a tough call to make. Regardless, take it off your bingo card, because for the first time today, we're on Tropical Sacrifice. All we're missing right now is Waterfall. Waterfall and... No, just Waterfall. Water and Fall. That should be the name of a map. That should be the name of a map in the next pool. <laughs> Water and Fall. <laughs> As we continue our best of three semifinales here on Tropical Sacrifice. In the bottom left tech quarter maps, putting all the way in the bottom left tech quarter, we of course have a Red Terran player coming out from the land of Korea, currently residing in Japan. His name means... Tranquil place or something like that. I don't remember what it. it it's a something place. A something place. He is representing Prep Esports. Hon Mono. And spawning in the top right hand corner of Tropical Sacrifice, we have the Polish Protoss player himself representing Infernales Esports. It is Papi. Going for a proxy. Yeah, I love to see it. Fight the cheeser with some cheese. There you go, mate. It's not the most committed cheese. We do have a gateway at home and one gateway across the map. So, again, with these first handful of units, ideally, um, Papi is able to take down Deny, cancel the CC on the low ground if there is one. As, oh my god, 
Hanmono is trying to psych his uh, opponent out and trying to hide his initial racks. Hey, you know what? I bet Hanmono is, or Papi is looking at this and saying, this is absolutely the best case scenario. <laughs> Especially because the Marine is... Oh, the Marine doesn't... Oh, there we go. The probe checks. The Marine is here. Now Papi knows the racks is at home. And this is more than best case scenario. This is best this case scenario. Here we go. Zealous already coming across the map. We have a Stalker and an Adept on the way. A bit of a 1 1 1. One of each coming out here for Papi to wreak havoc across the map. And we'll see if Honmono can defend. Ooh, as Honmono is delaying his CC by quite a bit. Yeah, it does mean that he's going to be nice for drop. over here. He is going to build an armory pretty yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think Honmono just dies. <laughs> yeah, ab he absolutely just dies. He is not set up at all to be able to defend against the gateway units coming this way. Yeah, he's gonna be forced to to use his widow mines back at home defensively, despite the fact that he probably doesn't want to. Boys are being pulled. The first deeper is already taking a lot of damage. Here we go. This widow mine, if it hits a cell, it could force some friendly fire. Ooh, as Bappy does back off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the plan here for Bappy. If he has to. If he has to take some damage from the Widow Mines, then he's going to, at the very least, take a couple of boys oh, down oh, with oh, him. He's oh. trying to time out the shade! Ooh. Slightly mistimed, but only barely. Well, I mean, nice micro from both players, because Honmono unborrows all of his Widow Mines to make sure not a single shot goes off. So, Honmono is being really greedy. He goes for the drop. There's one Marine to defend. <laughs> and the Armory is thrown down. Not even a bunker here. Oh my god, the balls on Hon Mono to, to leave his base completely defenseless. Now some Widow Mines are coming out, so he he's getting away with this. He's getting away with going for the drop. Hon Mono is the absolute definition of a Chad. <laughs> if, you're ever, if you're ever wondering what that uh, phrase means, yeah. Hon Mono. It's, oh my god, meanwhile, here we go. Here we do have a reaction from Papi in the end. The Widowmine shots are going to be going off here as Honmono chases down these workers. And there's no detection. These Widowmines, they're going to be up for quite some time. Up. Oh! oh is this is long enough! Oh. It was long enough, but thankfully, Papi was able to split up his forces or his workers right at the end here. He also forces all of the units that were at his base to come home. True. They all come in. I love this move from Papi. He just completely evacuates. He's going to be mining at his natural instead. He knows that the main base is going to get out of control. We don't have Blink. We are going to have an Observer here in a couple of seconds. So Papi making the most out of a bad situation. But you know what? Another Medivac is making its way to the natural. Yeah, another four Widow Mines are locked and loaded. Again, Honmono has to deal more damage because he delayed his CC for so long. He's on one base right now. He needs to get a juicy yeah. connection. And that was a pretty juicy connection, if well, I do it for myself. That was it? Yeah, GG! <laughs> I'm gonna tell myself that series, 1-1! One, one. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at the victory screen and I was like, Alright, Papi, do you take this here? I was like, wait, why is Terran music playing? Why why is that the Terran logo? Why does it say Hanmoto won that game? Because Hanmoto won that game. <laughs> We're going into our ace match. Uh. GG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of the mind drops, man. Sometimes it only takes one. Uh. And this was one of those times. Let's go, mate. Let's go as we let the players know that we are ready. I don't know if we are ready as we get into the ace match here. Apparently, okay, a handful of shots are all you need. Nine pros went down there in the natural base and... Poppy, he, he taps down. He's done. He wants to get the hell out of there and get into the ace match. Indeed he does. Oh, man. Man, after game number one of just flawless defense, that's got to be a little bit of a... That's got to be a little bit of a punch in the gut to lose to win a mind drop like that. Get Poppy. But regardless, we are going to be concluding this best of three semifinals and determining who moves on to our best of five grand finals here on inside and out.
We're in the top right hand corner map, so I'm gonna go all the way in the top right hand corner. We have a Red Terran player coming up from the land of Korea, but now residing in the land of Japan, which I think is actually a little bit further to the north, so. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, uh. Yeah, he's, he's still coming on down. He is, of course, going to be representing Prep Esports, the Giga Chat himself, Hon Mono. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Inside and Out, we have the Polish Protoss player himself representing Infernales Esports. It is Papi. Going for another like proxy. This. Yeah, going for another proxy in the face of a Turex. I like this. Koro is pointing out oh in the chat God. all of the pro pulls in that last game. <laughs> was just insanely <laughs> close. Split second defenses. Mm -hmm. And then his attention was elsewhere for like two seconds. And he immediately loses the game. It only takes one. Sometimes. Sometimes it only takes one. And what's it going to take this game? Because Papi is going for the same opener. He's going for one gate at home, one gate across the map. We're going to have a Zealot, a Stalker, and an Adept coming out here to delay that CC and to deal some damage. But Hon Mono is going Giga all in right now on one base. He's going for four axe. Is this good? I guess a proxy gate? I mean, I don't uh, know. <laughs> is this fine? I, I haven't seen this. Oh, he's scouting! He's scouting! Yo. Oh my god! Will we see it yet? He sees it immediately. He's wow. looking to depower this. Amono has the advantage at the moment. Papi! Okay, he did not neglect his zealot. I was gonna say, that's an important uh, component when you're going for a proxy gate like this. You need to be building that uh, zealot back home. Yeah, so this is going to get real weird. <laughs> so one, we're going to have a massive amount of Marines, but they're also vanilla Marines. So there's going to be a lot of like micro potential here for Papi. Uh, but at the same time, like if at any moment, I love this whole mono, he's setting up a trap. He's setting, he's hiding the rest of his Marines. He wants to go first round, but he gets smaller. Oh, yeah, that one Marine right at tail end. Was well, enough to tip off Papi in the oh. direction of these Marines. There's still a lot of firepower available for home mono. Papi is going to be forced to retreat, but... Yeah, Papi is not going to be losing any units just yet. Yeah, exactly. Like, I love what Homono was doing. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late to set up that trap and to get a full surround and to catch that first Stalker. Again, it's very difficult for Vanilla Marines to catch Stalkers, period, because they have so much range. Um, but at the same time, like, this amount of Marines is kind of sus. Like, Papi should be aware as he loses a Stalker that something is not right. That's a lot of Marines. It's a lot of Marines. They were well set up in a concave and with a little bit of star stepping. Papi will uh, draw first blood. I'm afraid. Like, Papi, he's taking his Nexus, which I think oh, is no. fine. It's fine for now, I guess. Um, but I, I, I need it to see more from him that he recognizes. Okay, we have a shield battery on the way as well. Okay, I think he recognizes how aggressive Homono plans to be. Yeah, I guess it really depends on how well Papi is able to keep Homono on his side of the map because this can pay off really, really well for Papi. It's a huge risk. But if he can kite really well with his stalkers, if he can just keep the bio at bay, then it's going to pay off big time. He's going to have such an economic lead. But mm -hmm. if not, then, well, Hanmono, he's got a couple of uh, marauders to deal with stalkers. He uh, yeah. has about twice the army supply, and he's moving across the map. Yeah. Couple we... of boys, though, which is one note I have. No! <laughs> he's falling, do, do you know who you're casting? Go. Of course, Honmon is pulling the boys, mate. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, Here we go. boy. We were talking about it. Giga all in, Papi. We have Marines. We have Marauders. We have SCVs. What do we have at home to defend? We do have two sentries. Force fields are king right now. They need to be on point. He needs to buy time. Smoke all in, coming down. Uh, Force fields. Uh, uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. Yeah. These Marines are still able to get into position. Battery overcharge is helping, but with the sheer amount of firepower and DPS available for Hamono, it does take too much. Actually, I that mate, Hamono, he was he was a moving instead of targeting down the shield battery. That overcharge actually did so much there to help Papi, and he's defending. He is absolutely defending. Yeah. That's a move that's going to haunt Hanmono for quite some time. Yeah, with the, with the amount of Marauders that he had, it honestly right wouldn't there. have taken much to, to focus on the shield battery. Like, he was a little bit overconfident, it feels. Like, he he's moving the boys again. You love to see it, but 
I think it's too little too late at this point. He could have won the game uh... right then and there. But his attention was elsewhere, or at least his attention wasn't on the shield battery. Yeah, again, I think he was just overconfident. I think he looked at his numbers, and I thought he probably thought that he won the game, especially with those force fields. Like he's like, no, yeah, I got this. There's no problem. I can just a move stim and win. Wait, I don't have stim. And ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see if he can pull it off again. The Zelt is gonna go down. The Marauders dishing out as much damage as possible. Enough time as possible. Where a second shield battery comes out, a second overcharge comes out, and Papi holds. And now we have an immortal available for Papi, so. All of these yeah, marauders are gonna have a very bad time dealing with all of that. Mm -hmm. Hanmono, there's no way he can go back home and try to macro out of this. Again, he was smoge all in. Yeah, this is the PSA right for. The he was. Uh... <laughs> he was a Exodia all in, <laughs> mate. <laughs> and he was a. Ape. In. A PSA for the people in the yeah. chat. If we have, if you're, if you're a Terran player, if you have an overcharge up against you, respect the overcharge. GG gets called, and Papi takes the series two to one. Very nicely done here from Papi. I was as worried as you were, Light, when I saw the Nexus get thrown down. I thought for mm -hmm. sure Harmona's gonna take this, but like you said. You never want to underestimate the power of a battery overcharge. And that's exactly what Hormono did. GG, Papi is going to be our first finalist for the evening. GG, well played. There's a world out there where Hormono would have made it. He was so oh. close again. Uh, a couple of other decisions and maybe he would have made it through. But congratulations to Papi. It's his first time playing in Sparkling Tuna Cup. And he is walking that royal road. Yo. Yo. It's a very real possibility for him to just flat out win this week's Sparkling Tuna Cup as we have had a couple of updates on the bracket. Nikorakt has actually taken out Demi 2-1 to one and will now be facing Arok Fire in the semifinals. Arok Fire, who was waiting for quite some time over here, will have an opponent available. Yeah, massive shout out to Arog Fire. He had time to drink, go to the bathroom, get some food, you know, order some menu log. Um, and finally, it is time to play out his series. My condolences, because with the death of Three Points and with the death of Demi, that means there are zero Zerg players remaining in our tournament. Welcome to Sparkling Tuna Cup. True. <laughs> uh, a lot of TVPs for whatever reason, the past couple of weeks. And I think we're going to jump over to EU. Yes.